take a look at this. This is a Cartesian diver. Now it may look like an ordinary water bottle, but if you take your finger and place along the side of a Cartesian diver and draw your finger down, look how the eyedropper follows your finger. Here it's sinking, here it's floating, almost by magic. There might be a little bit of magic involved, but there's mostly science. And if you stay to the end of this video, I'm going to show you why this eyedropper is sinking and why it's floating. Now, 2300 years ago, there was a Greek scientist by the name of Archimedes. He was also very interested in why things float or sink. For instance, he wondered why is it that sometimes out in the ocean, a boat could float and then unfortunately, sometimes it would sink. Well, he devised an experiment and discovered that in order for a boat to float, all it has to do is displace its weight or push away its weight in water. We're going to recreate that experiment today using a few things. This is a displacement tank, which is just a container of water with an overflow tube. And over here we have some clay objects and we've got a digital scale. So let's start with these. This clay object I fashioned into the shape of a ball. This one I kind of made into the shape of a boat. Let's weigh them on this digital scale and see how much they weigh. Let's start with the clay ball. It weighs, let's see here, about 50 grams. Now let's weigh the clay boat and see how much it weighs. For our experiment, I hope it's close. And it too weighs 50 grams. So both objects are made out of clay. Both weigh 50 grams, but only one of these two is actually going to float. And you probably guess which one's going to float or sink. Let's start with the clay ball. Let's place it in this overflow tank, this displacement tank. And not surprisingly, it sank like a rock. And a bunch of water is coming out on this end. How much water comes out? Well, if we wait long enough for all the water to drip out that would drip out, it would come out to about 30 milliliters on our graduated beaker. Um, that is equal to the volume of this clay ball. That is how much space it takes up. But what we're really interested in today is not something sinking, but more about why is something floating. So let me fish this ball out of the water. And this time, let's float the clay boat. Now to do this precisely, we have to pour this water back in. So we're back at zero, because really you can look at this like a digital, or not digital scale, but a water scale. I need some helping hands to help place this boat. I've got my little hands here. Let's carefully lay this on top of the water. And look at this. It's floating and it's pushing out a volume of water. Now this time, the amount of water that comes out on this side is not going to be 30 milliliters. It should be 50 milliliters at least if Archimedes was correct. Now while we wait for this to drip and get up to that point, let's take a look at the uh, Cartesian diver that we saw earlier. Why was this thing sinking and floating in the first place? Why was it magically following my finger? Turns out, it has nothing to do with following my finger. What I was doing was I was just changing the density of this eyedropper by squeezing the bottle and letting go. Squeezing the bottle and letting go. It turns out, if you look closely up here at the eyedropper, you will see that there's actually an air bubble. That air bubble is pushing out about four milliliters of water. Well, it turns out the eyedropper weighs four grams, so it floats. But when you cause water pressure by squeezing it, watch the, eye, the air bubble. It gets compressed. It's too small, and it sinks to the bottom. But when I let go, the air bubble expands, pushes out four milliliters, and it floats again. Well, let's go back now to our little boat in the water and see what we've come up with. Now, our graduated beaker only goes up to the 40 milliliter mark, but if you use your imagination kind of guesstimate a little bit, you can see that the next level up would be about 50 milliliters. So it turns out that Archimedes really did know what he was talking about. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.